Hi, my name is Brent Salzgiver. I don't know when you're watching this. Uh, maybe it's Sunday morning, uh, maybe it's Sunday night, maybe it's after uh, a Memorial Day picnic where you're staying six feet apart with masks on, whenever. Uh, we are just so grateful uh, that we were able to worship together at this time. Um, it's been a difficult uh, couple months, um, especially for us as a church. Uh, but one of the things I've enjoyed is this opportunity to worship together whenever we are able to. And as we continue to see what, what it's going to look like uh, when we come back, there will be a lot of changes. Um, but one of the things is that I think God might be doing something new, and that's just been exciting to me as I've seen you all uh, step up in some amazing ways. So I just want to thank you for that. Um, even though we are in my home because I have a, a family member who is sick, and I needed to stay here. I still have my normal stuff with me. I have Coke, something to fidget with, something to write with, uh, and my worship candle, which is larger and red, uh, for a very, very uh, specific reason. Um, and that is it's the only candles we had in the house. So let us now uh, just take some time uh, to be with God. So let us pray. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you revealed to us a power that has no parallel. May the eyes of our hearts be enlightened to this power and all it has done in our lives. Pour out your spirit of power upon us, that we may proclaim your glory and your grace. Amen. As I'm sitting in my home, I can just begin to see things pan out. Um... We're lucky enough uh, to have our street security guard living in our house, uh, so you may hear her. Her name is Ruby. Uh, as long as she is behind uh, a glass, she is very tough and scary looking, um, so please disregard that. Um, I guess if it's not a dog barking, it's wind on the steeple. Um, but anyways, just wanted to give you that reminder. So our first reading comes to us from uh, the 47th Psalm. And this is what it says. It says, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome. A great king over all the earth. He subdued, he subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, who he loves. Salah. God has grown up with a shout. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord, with the sound of a trumpet, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his heavenly throne. The princes of the peoples gather. And as the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. We now get the opportunity to come together uh, and pray. One of the neat things is knowing that no matter when we are praying, that God is listening, uh, but also that God hears us together. Uh, and it's not about uh, what we hear, um, but it's about what God hears. So during this prayer, I'll begin with a brief prayer, uh, and then there'll be different parts of uh, different times of silence throughout the prayer. And we invite you to lift up your joys and your concerns, um, and you can say them as loud uh, or as quietly as you want. Uh, I encourage you uh, to say it just, you know, as loud as you want, simply because I'm not there. Um, but uh, let us now go to God. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you at this moment in need of your presence, in need of your love, Lord, hear us now as we come to you. Lord, we, pl we pray for Christians throughout the world that we may know that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For leaders of the nations and cities of the world, that they may be wise in their administration of government during the pandemic, and selflessly serve the common good, we pray to the Lord.
for all bishops, pastors, district superintendents, and leaders of our congregations, that they may faithfully tend the family of God during this season of social distancing. We pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, and other health care workers who tend the sick and dying, that they fulfill their vocation without undue fear or personal danger, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and those alone in quarantine, that they may find comfort and care in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. For the earth you have given to our care, and for all creatures who share it with us, that they may be glorified in all your works, we pray to the Lord. For those anywhere who have given their life for our freedom, we pray to the Lord. For others' concerns that we express here and now, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we, your children, never pray alone, but only with all your saints in all the world. Therefore, we pray just as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes to us from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Today is a special day in the life of the church uh, known as Ascension Sunday. Uh, it comes the week before uh, Pentecost where we celebrate uh, the birthday of the church and the Holy Spirit coming down. Um, so this is the scripture that we hear on this Ascension Sunday. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead, and on the third day, and, on the, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew with them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great, with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you at a moment during our week that we devote to you. Lord, we have so many things that we are worried about. So many uncertainties. Maybe it's where the next paycheck is going to come from. Maybe how we're going to get money. How we're going to survive in this time of quarantine. Maybe it's what we have to do today, what we don't want to do. Maybe it's just the fact that we wish we could get out of our houses. But Lord, amidst all of these distractions, we ask that you take them away from us. Wake us up. Open our ears. Not to what I say, but to what you say. Lord, anything I have planned or prepared to say that does not match your agenda, I ask that you remove it from my heart. Replace my words with yours. We ask this all in your name we pray. Amen. (laughs) 
if you've ever been in a Bible study that I've done, especially an ongoing Bible study, not one that has a specific theme necessarily, um, but just getting together to read the Bible. Uh, one of the things we talk about um, is, you know, what do you think the Scripture means? Um, write down what are questions you have. What are things uh, that you don't know about? What are things um, that tick you off? Uh, what uh, is it that you can't get past? Uh, for whatever reason. And one of the things we know um, is that depending on our context, Scripture reads differently. What do I mean by that? Um, take a verse out of the book of Song of Solomon. Uh, these are love poems. Uh, and when you look at them, you know, these are some love poems. Um, when you read those, uh, as a child going through maybe confirmation, uh, most of it goes over your head. You don't get it. Um, but then when you read it as an adult, uh, you kind of go, what? I didn't know this was in the Bible. And one of those reasons why is because your context changed. Your context looks differently. So first, I'm going to give you the answers. You know, this verse uh, is the ending of Luke, um, and it takes three areas that it focuses on. It focuses on the proof of resurrection. Uh, it focuses on Jesus's commissioning, uh, and it focuses on a parting blessing. So if we look at the scripture, um, we understand that at the beginning, uh, when Jesus says, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Uh, there, everything written about me in the law of Moses and blah, 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 blah. Basically, what he's saying is everything that Scripture said, you watched me. You watched me do this. There's your proof. Uh, and it continues talking about the proof of the resurrection. Um, but then it moves to not only look what I've done, but to there's some expectations for you. Uh, and as he's talking, he says, these are your expectations. Uh, have a change of heart and life, for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in Christ's name and all nations. Go out and do that. Go out and talk about my love. Go out and talk about uh, who I am. Bring people to me. And as St. Francis would add to it, you know, sometimes when necessary, use words. Um, but that's the commissioning, that sending out. Um, because this is ending in Luke. And then it ends with that blessing. And that blessing um, we see is, you know, he leads them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he left them. Uh, so these three parts make up this scripture that we hear on this Ascension uh, Day. I went with day, depending on when you were reading it. Um, but like I said before, uh, in our Bible studies, we should be trained um, to ask questions. Uh, questions are good. Uh, God likes questions, because it's only with us asking questions and struggling with scripture that we're able to grow. Um, it's those scriptures that we read and we never question, we never uh, think about what it means in our lives um, that kind of bring us more trouble. Um, Jesus doesn't want our blind loyalty. Uh, and as I read this, I kind of took on the same mind frame that I ask of anyone who's taken a Bible study with me. And I kept reading it and I kept reading it and I kept reading it. Uh, and there was a part I couldn't get past. Um, I read it in different translations, couldn't get past it. Um, every time I read it, it just popped up to me. Um, depending on where I was at, uh, it would either take me off on a thought or it would at least just give me a good giggle. Uh, I would ask if we were here, if you, if you were here and I could see your beautiful faces, what part do you think it is? But since that doesn't work very well, um, I will read it to you. It is the 49th verse. And see, I'm going to send you what my father promised. So he said, don't worry. I'm going to give you what God promised, the Holy Spirit. But he says, but 
stay here in the city until that happens. My guess is the disciples kind of went, all right, we can do that. Hang out together? Fine. My guess is when this whole quarantine thing started, some of us kind of had the same thing. All right, cool. Can't go out together? Hang out together? Fine. What we'll fun. We'll make some TikTok. Um, we'll learn about uh, the, the uh, Tiger King. Um, yes, uh, Carol Baskin did it. Um, but we will also... You know, as we get ready for this, we'll wear pajamas all day. Uh, and then it gets to a little later in the quarantine. Um, and, you know, that spouse or that child or family member that you love, um, you're thinking about if they're asleep, you wonder if they would hear you come in and just put a pillow right over their face because uh, you're tired of seeing them and being around them. Um, and as I think about this, you know, this is us. We're waiting. Um, we've gone through Easter. We know what not only God has done, but God is doing, and we believe the promises of what God is going to do, but we are at a time of waiting because we can't do what God calls us to do. We can't preach the gospel. We can't help people. We can't do the things that we've normally done to be the Christians that God has called us to be. It sucks. I feel sorry for the disciples because uh, I think for the first time we get it. You know, they didn't have to wear masks, but still they were told to wait. I often wonder what they did when they waited because one of the things we see is that uh, Christ opened their minds and things began to make sense. One of my less exciting parts about high school uh, was a cross-country meet that I ran. If you don't know, cross-country is uh, 3.1 miles. Fun race. Uh, I ran it. It was my freshman year. Um, and I went to Bloomsburg High School. Uh, and at Bloomsburg, we get a week off for the Bloomsburg Fair. And during that week, I decided, being the smart man that I was, that I wasn't going to do a thing. I wasn't running. I wasn't working out. I was going to eat uh, and eat and eat and hang out with my friends. So by the end of the week, um, we have our meet. And our meet's in Williamsport. And the reason I didn't work out is because I had a secret weapon. My secret weapon was this new thing that had just started to come out. Um, it was, I think the one I had was just called power gel. Um, and it's those gels, but it was the early time of the gels that you take and it's supposed to give you energy. Like, dudes, I got this. I'm going to win this. Uh, so right before it goes, I choke down, kind of have to chew this jelly thing. Um, and I don't remember finishing the race cause I didn't. Um, what I do remember is is uh, at two different points stopping to vomit, um, which didn't end well, uh, at least for my reputation. Um, the hardest part was that I was then later found uh, by my coach um, in a bush that I had just fallen into covered in my own vomit. So why do I tell you this story? It is, it is not for my ego. I hope you realize that. Um, but it, it realizes that Look what happens when we don't prepare. When we don't prepare in life, uh, rarely does good come out of it. So Jesus told the disciples to wait. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, you know what you're called to do. Go out and preach forgiveness. Know that I am with you. Do the same thing that I have done. Not because of who you are, but because of who I am, Christ says. I don't think you could ever talk me in to the idea that the disciples didn't prepare 
for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Yes, they may have been stuck in this place waiting. And we know what it's like to be stuck in places waiting. It sucks. But how well have they prepared for that moment when the Holy Spirit comes and just amazingly turns their lives upside down? I don't know when, but at some point, Dauphin County will come out of this. We will go to yellow, we will go to green, hopefully we will not have a back lash, um, but we will get back to what a new normal is. As we think about the type of children God calls us to be, and the type of children we are, what are we doing to prepare for that time when we're allowed out and God expects us to preach the gospel? Even sometimes with words. I realized that even being a Christian calls for time of preparation. Not just a Lent, but preparing for the ways in which uh, you're going to let God use you. Um, I know for me, one of the things I've been doing is just kind of doing checklists of stuff that I want to do each day. You know, I, I want to send a video or call someone and tell them, you know what, I miss you. I care about you. Um, I thank God for you. Uh, that's one thing. Because um, I don't know about you, but when I run into people I know uh, at the store, it is the most awkward thing ever. Like I've forgotten how to talk to people. Um, so I've been doing that. Uh, another thing is I loved the saying, um, you know, when uh, your table is full, get a bigger table. So I started to think about how can I do that? You know, if I had a bigger table, who would I want to invite? And who does God want me to invite? And recognizing that maybe I need to begin to lay that groundwork. Maybe I need to begin to do that. Um, it's realizing that when this ends, some of us are going to go back to jobs that are hard. Uh, we're going to go back to work and see people that we don't get along with. Uh, one of the things I've done with three close friends, none of who are clergy, none of whom are church-related, is we put together an accountability group. Um, what are the men that we want to be? You know, How do we become um, better spouses, better friends, better fathers? Um, and we've just been getting together and talking. Just preparing for when this is over, because that's when the work begins. Um, this time has been difficult. Uh, this time has been gut-wrenching. This time has sucked. Let's be real. Um, but just like the disciples, God has said to us, just wait. Wait. But when I say go, that it's time, be prepared and go. So today, I encourage you to think about the ways in which you are intentionally going to be the person that God has called you to be. God has called us to a time of waiting. But when that time ends, how are you going to go out and preach the gospel? <laughs> Show the love of Christ, being the people that God has called you to be. It's my joy and my honor to be your pastor. It is my joy and my honor to go on this walk with you uh, as we all um, pray and begin to get closer and closer to this time when we can see each other again. Um, my prayer for you and for me is that we continue to be diligent uh, of preparing uh, of ways that we can grow closer to God uh, and be the people that God has called us to be. So I pray that you have a wonderful uh, week and that in some way I may talk to you, text, uh, get an email from you. Uh, you all are in my thoughts and prayers whether I know you uh, or not. Um, so go forth now uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, go forth now knowing that, yes, this is a time of waiting, but that soon it'll be a time of acting. Go prepare. Amen.